literally cursing me out of the house. And you want me to just leave the house? And now you're coming and bring me water or water, I mean, water, I mean milk. This happened to me also many times. And I was like, I was scratching my head when I was a young kid. I was like, what kind of mom is this? One moment she's scolding at me, the next thing she says, please drink better than It's like, is this the same lady or some gym game in front? Human nature. Human nature. You have to understand. That's why Allah made women mothers, and that's why Allah didn't make men mothers. Although society today wants you to believe differently. Now you have men who say that they are mothers. Subhanallah, we're living in a very bad time. Transgenderism, yes. you have a lot of fathers who say, don't call me father, I'm your mother. That's why we are here. <laughs> That's why we are here. Yes, we are living in a very dangerous time, I can tell you. Even I, as an imam, for 22 years, I never faced this unprecedented time. I never in my mother's dream had the idea of how to deal with this situation when your child comes home and says, oh, Jennifer in school, she has two daddies. My, yes. my daughter, she asked, this is why I'm here. Yeah. I don't know how to explain So I think we're doing this at the right time. Yeah. <laughs> but there should be more people here. So I want you to help me and start making phone calls today. Come here every Sunday. We have 20 seats still and 23 seats. She wants, uh, Baba, why you don't dress up like a woman? Because Angelica mom, they both are. Exactly. Um, this is happening. Like, oh, this is happening. Yes. It's happening right now. <laughs> and we, as, we as, as parents, we need to come together to understand how we can do better parenting. But before that, we have to understand the philosophy of parenting, right? So the first thing is that passion. Second thing is respect. How does respect come? It comes through the hadith or also where he said that the elders have to show mercy. And I give you the example. Mothers are very merciful. Mothers are far more merciful than fathers. Now, well, please sign in, inshallah. So, Mercy is something that you have to develop inside it, especially fathers, the men. Men are less merciful towards children because they have to be, they have to show they're strong. Okay, like, one, like one father told me, Brother Joel, I can't be a sissy with my you know, kids. So nobody's asking me to be a sissy. You know, I mean, I'm, for lack of a better word, I'm using that. But, you know, his mindset was that you have to be macho. That is why. I've seen my grandfather like that. I've seen my father like that. I said, but did you see Muhammad was like that? Was he like that? Did he deal with Hassan and say, his grandchildren, little boys, running around. Did he ever say, oh, I'm your grandfather, I'm your nana, so you have to respect me? No, he gained the respect. They would cuddle up him, that famous hadith where he was in the sajda, in first namaz, he's on duty, he's on job. He's doing his job as a prophet, he's leading the whole salat. You have hundreds of people behind him praying, and he, he elongates his sajda. So, and nobody in the back, everybody in the back is scared. The, the narrator of the hadith says we were so worried that maybe the Muslim passed away. Some of us were about to get up from Sajda to go check on him. And so he went a long Sajda. He didn't care about the people. Who did he care about? His grandson, Hassan. He's on my back. If I get up from Sajda, he's going to fall. What is this? Mercy. Parental power comes from mercy, having merciful. And then when you are merciful, that will extract respect from the child. A child will respect their parents more if the parents are more merciful. But it has to be balanced. Don't be too merciful, too liberal, too relaxed, too, you know, open that everything is memory, everything is fine. Then you have this kind of scenario. Mom, this is Jennifer. And Jennifer is wearing shorts and tank top. You know, I'm thinking of marrying her. We were in, we were in eighth grade. This is the opposite side of parenting. Oh, no, no, no. Imam Jawa said you gotta be merciful. So I'm just merciful. No hardship. No rules in the house. If you have no rules in the house, or if you have no rules in the family, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Huh? Yeah, what's the world I'm looking for? What's gonna happen? If you have no rules in the house, you can do whatever you wanna do in front of your mom and dad in the house. What's gonna happen in the house? Chaos. Chaos. <laughs> The son wants to do something, the daughter wants to do something, this want to do something. So parent-child relationship has to be very healthy. It has to start off with respect. And children respect when they receive respect, when they receive merciful, merciful attitude from parents. And children will always listen to you when they respect you a lot. Remember the last time when you didn't have to repeat anything to your son and daughter and they listen. Because at that moment, their, their barometer of respect was very high. So high. Some days our children respect us very high, 
some days our children respect is very low. The natural reason why children respect parents is low, when you don't listen to them. They wanted to buy something, you said no. Every time you say no, every time you say no, they keep going. So don't just say no, give them the explanation why. My first three kids were the easiest to parent. They always, always listen. Never, never if and and must, never question. My fourth child, who's 15 now, from day one, from three year old, they always want an explanation. Why no? And if my wife says, look, your elder brother or sister never asked, well, oh, I'm not like them, I'm different. I need to know. So I have to sit him down and say, look, I will tell my wife, leave it to me, don't worry. Because, you know, mother, motherly love sometimes cannot explain the no. And they would give it. And children know that very well. If they see a no from a dad, they'll run to the mom. And they'll try to please the mom. Oh, no, Ami, please, Ami. And Ami will finally give it. That's how Ami is made. Ami was made for Jannah. Because that's what Rasul said, that the Jannah is beneath the feet of Ami. Because they know very well. Kids are smart. They will grab your feet. Ami, you're my Jannah. Ami, you're my Jannah. <laughs> uh, they, they're there. Nice. Go ahead. Just give me. No, I said no. No, he's not. No, 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 it's okay. I'll take Mezi And that's what happens. The mother takes the responsibility to that. Next time the child now stretches a little bit more, a little bit more, a little more. There's no end to it. So that's why it's very important to understand a healthy parent-child relationship. And I gave you the ingredients. The ingredients for a healthy parent-child relationship, number one, there has to be passion in the child for you. They're passionate about you. They will do anything for you. And that passion comes from respect. They respect you a lot. And how do they get respect? When you show mercy. Because the Hadith also sort of has a two-way side to it. He said, uh, whoever does not respect our elders and does not show mercy to our youngsters, he is not from our woman. So what also is saying, elders have a responsibility to show mercy, compassion. And that's why he, he, he did that by example. He showed mercy, compassion to his daughters, to his grandchildren. There are so many numerous Hadiths of Rasulullah how he dealt with Fatima Lidran, that when she would come, he would get up. Which father gets up for their son and daughter? But this is a prophet of Allah. And the Sahaba noted that. He said, wow. <coughs> and he would, you know, cuddle her and be very good. Even when she came from complaining. You know that famous hadith that many Mulanas and Muftis <laughs> relate to, especially for women, that the famous hadith of uh, where Fatima Zahra, she came to Rasulullah she came to Rasulullah complaining, Ya Rasulullah my O oh father, O oh my father, my knuckles, my hands, they pay because of household chores, household work, you know, uh, please sign in inshallah. Please just sign in inshallah. My, my knuckles and heart, uh, you know, my body aches because of household chores and work. So she was expecting that he would, okay, find a lady or someone, a maid that would help. So instead of, she was expecting that as a fatherly, but look how he dealt with it. He said, oh Fatima, shall I not teach you something better than that? She wanted a Khadima, a servant that would help her in household chores. But Prophet Muhammad Sallam, you know, he said, I can get something better than that for you. You know, earlier he said about incentive. See, put an incentive. He wants, you want this, but I have something better for you. So her ears got up, stand up. Oh yeah, what is better? Say 33 times SubhanAllah, say 33 times Alhamdulillah, say 34 times Allah Akbar after every salah, your pain will go away, you won't need it. And she went back home, not even realizing that she bartered her agreement. Why? Because a father had a very healthy relationship. When you have a healthy relationship, every family should have a, 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 a barometer, or temperature, like a thermometer. You know, we take thermometer. Almost the temperature of my heart. So there should be a temperature gauge at home. How healthy is our relationship? And the temperature should tell us, are we having two-way communications? Or is it a one-way communication? Are we having a lot of arguments? If there's a lot of arguments between the parent-child relationship, it's not a healthy relationship. If there's a lot of disconnect between parent and child, it's not a healthy relationship. If there's a lot of missed opportunities, missed timing, this time means children are, you know, a lot of parents complain, children don't have time for us. They're just busy in their friends. Well, you know why they're busy in their friends? Because they don't like to be busy with you. <coughs> Simple as that. I tell parents straight up, 
a single sister, brother, you might not like it, what I'm going to say, but your child doesn't love you. No, how dare you can say that? My child doesn't. No, because if they love you, they want to spend the most time with you. Rasul is going to spend the most time with his children and his children's children, you know? So therefore, the children also pay back. The more we see, parenting starts from the day you find out the news from the doctor or from the nurse, you're going to be a parent. That's when the parenting starts. We, as parents, you know, Muslim parents, we start parenting after the child is born. You know the Jews? Talk to any, uh, talk to any Jewish rabbi, they'll tell you. Jewish rabbis, they give training to expectant mothers of how to, how to groom your child while he's still in the stomach. They have proper courses for that. Nine months of training. They, they, they put on the Torah, and they, they put on loud voice, they know, they know all the words, and they put it right next to the stomach. So the child is listening to the Torah in Hebrew language all the time throughout the nine months. And they have a special diet for the mom. They say, don't eat this, don't eat this, don't eat this, eat this, eat this. Look at the children when they come out in the world. They're like genius, the mothers. The whole world is being controlled right now with who? Israel. <laughs> All the big tech companies, their headquarters are also in, in, in Tel Aviv. All the new technology being invented is over there. You, you can do a Google search, you'll find out. There's an article I read about two years ago. Israeli parents, what do they do for their children? Especially, in fact, the, the subsection of the article was, Israeli moms, what is their diet? My, my wife was, but we just had a daughter last year, so when, when she was expecting, I said, look, this child, we're going to make an experiment. So do everything that you see in the article, make sure you eat that. There was like, you have to eat almonds, you have to eat walnuts, you have to eat the, what the chilgos, the pine nuts, and all kinds of dry, dry food, every dry food diet. I was like, wait a second. And now I see my daughter, she's 16 months old, she learns so fast. I said, like, it works. The Israeli guys are good at that. I teach my daughter one word, she repeats right away. And all my, my, I have four other kids. My eldest is 23 year old. He just recently got married. So if he is so slow. I said, like, Baba, I wasn't like this. This, this. this girl is like 16 months. You're speaking things like that. Yes. I have a three month old baby. I tried everything when you just said. She communicates so, so well compared to my five year old when she was a baby. And she recognized everything she likes. Whatever you talk, she read, I read books to her. And did you, in, did you talk to her? Did you talk to her while you were expecting? I was reading a sort of money art. Yes, so no, I talk, talk. Read. Yes. Because that article said, the article, said, the article said that Israeli moms, they talk to the child while they All the dry fruits, actually they do work, they blend their fruits. There you go. <laughs> My wife is saying, why didn't we learn this before? I said, you're not a good parent. I tell you, we don't learn parenting. Can you believe it? I got it from the shop. The shop. All the dry fruit, the fresh ones. I was desperate. So that's 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 very important. Having a healthy parent-child relationship, and that healthy temperature can be when you are spending a lot of time together as a family with the kids. Usually, we spend more time when they're young, right? As they start growing up, the mindset is, oh, but you know that you have to give them space. Yeah, you give them their space, their time, their privacy, but you have to have family events. You have to plan the weekend together. It's not like your weekend is separate, our weekend is separate. A lot of parents do that. Hey, we gotta go to this party, we gotta go to this party. Oh, I'm not going there, I don't have anybody there that I can talk to. So they have their own planning, they have their planning. So the whole weekend, eight, nine, ten hours, it's disconnect. The healthy relationship that the gurus teach in their book, in their self help books, is the more time you spend with your child. In fact, one book where I read about parenting, he said, Make it a point that you have at least, at least one meal a day at home on the table together, together. If they don't sit, make them sit down. Son, daughter, sit down, we're going to eat together. And he said in the book, he said, don't just eat and look at each other's face, talk what you eat. How did you go at school? How did you think go at college? What are you planning for next week? What are you planning for next month? How your study is going on? Anything issue with the teachers? And don't just talk about studies, but talk about life. Talk about where do you see we as a family go? What should we do? What's the next? You know, family plan, not that family plan that doctors teach us. We talk about family plan, that we as a family unit, where do you want to see us as a family grow over the next five years, next ten years? No. When you're making a big decision like buying a house or something, don't just talk to your wife or husband only. Talk to the kids. You know, they're small. You know, engage. Engage them. That's what parenting is. So, parenting philosophy is very important. Compassion, mercy, right? That 
derives respect. You know, the more you chat. See, why did they follow Rasulullah many times? This is something that the Khulafa Rashidin said also. The four guiding caliphs. They said many times we noticed that whatever Prophet would say, the Sahaba would only do it. But when we say as a Khalifa, they have a little bit of resentment. So the underlying principle they learn from that, from their own experience as a Khalifa, respect. They don't respect us like a prophet. So respect is the key ingredient to obedience. They didn't respect him in Mecca, so they didn't obey him. When they were in Medina, they respected him because they believed in him, they loved him, and they were ready to give their life for him, so they obeyed. They would do anything, night or day, whatever the Sussan said they do. So respect is very big. And how do you command respect from child, from day one, talking to them, talking to them with respect? One of the biggest problems with us uh, DC parents are, you know, subcontinent Indian Pakistani parents is we have a cultural baggage. Mm -hmm. The cultural baggage is no, I have to talk to kids without respect. Hey, respect, respect, you need some Krishna. I have to be <coughs> strong, I have to be firm. Dark people. I, 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 I will confess, I have the biggest comfort of this thing. I would many times as a father, you ask my son, and they'll tell you right away, oh, Baba has changed a lot. 10, 15 years ago, it would be just like the dictator style, you know. My way or the highway. I had to, I to learn parenting myself. That's the reason I'm doing this class, because I learned so many things in parenting. Even as an imam, I changed my fatherly parenting style because I learned from my mistakes. When I was doing, see, children are different. So my elder two sons, they're very, very obedient. They never gave me a hard time. Even in that dictator style, macho style, they never said poof. But come in, you know, 2006 comes in, a new new boy is born, and this guy, he wants to challenge you. My mom always used to tell him, Ye to my Ye to my I mean, yes, he is a test case for me. So since he was born, since 2006, he's 16 now, there has not been a single day where I have not been challenged by him. The elder two never challenged. Okay, Baba, whatever you say, okay, okay. Even if I'm upset, they will not. But this guy, even if I'm upset, he would challenge. He would talk back and speak back politely. But he wants reasoning for everything. Then I changed myself. So that this style that I work with the other two would not work with this one. Here I gotta change myself and I have to go through because you know when you but our mindset is DC mindset, if I raise my voice, if I raise my pitch and tone and I say that and they, they will listen and they'll obey. It doesn't work with every child. Some children are like that, they'll listen, but others will not. So now when I try with my third son, it will work. And I'm seeing that. It's like, hey, I used to do this with Shahir, and so they, boom, they're listening. This guy, he's not even, he's not even budging an inch. And I said, this is not going to work. And you know, even if I you know, yell and scream, it doesn't work. It doesn't move. Some children, they are like frozen. You can shout your throat out on their head. So, that missed like the, I mean, you get like so irritated. Oh! Then it's okay, I gotta change my turn in one year. It's like, okay, Sala is great. Me and you have a we need to have a talk. Okay, Baba, let's talk. So where do you want to go? Uh, ice cream truck. Okay, let's go with ice cream. We're going to get an ice cream, we're gonna talk. You know, this thing that you said, we can't get this because of this, 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 this. But no why? See the consequences. I have to do a whole flow chart diagram to make this dude understand why I'm not saying when I get this. But the practical thing is health and relationships. He finally understood. He said, okay, I won't get it now, I'll get it later. Okay, um, I will forego this, I'll let go of this. So sometimes you have to do a lot of reasoning and logical understanding, but guess what? It requires a lot of work. patience. Before work, patience. Some, you are really tested to the core of your patience. And if you lose your patience while you're parenting, it destroys this health. We come back to, back to zero. zero. Only then you realize it that sometimes the whole phrase famous from your mom, like you give them hard time, good mom, but only good mom, and then it just makes you <laughs> so bad. I learned that also the same thing. My dad used to say, when you're going to become a dad, you're going to know, I say, yeah, 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 I don't that, don't worry about it. But the day my first child, actually when my first child was born, I didn't feel that much. It was the third child, you know, the, when this guy was born, it's like, now I'm remembering what he said, he's right there. And it becomes different. And the amazing thing is, they tell us that they put the budget, but when they become grandparent, when we have a child, they become grandparent, they change. What is it? And then, wait a second. Yes. With us, we're so, wait a second. With us, we're so strict so much, and now it's my son. But my mother said, soon, Asal says, Like, 
the interest is more than the principal amount that you love it. So you don't want you do the you when you become grandson you know. I said okay <laughs> when I get a grandson I'll know I don't know yet. But they, that's what grandparents say that when you see your children's children, your parenting your parenting philosophy changes. Now you want to make them a spoiled parent. Not everything you say no they say yes. yes. And you said, I learned this from you, Dad. Remember, you told me I couldn't get this. And I, no, no, that was for you. Because you were this, you were like, ah, yeah, yeah. But my mother used to use a phrase, and 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 my mother used to use a with many of your values, beliefs, and ways of being. This is the mission statement from a healthy parent-child relationship. When a child loves you, respects you, have a passion for you, takes interest in you, they will always want to be pleased with you. And one thing that we need to do with our children is do a lot of stories, kahani, stories, story time. And the best stories to relate is the stories of Sahaba. This is something I learned from my experience. When I start reading about stories of Sahaba and how they deal with their parents, like always Karni, very you know, famous incident of that, you know, um, Abu Ayyub al Sani has a very famous incident, uh, Hazrat Ali is of himself has a very famous incident. There are many stories. There's a book called Hayatul Sahaba, the life biography of the companions of Husserl. It has a lot of stories in there of how the companions of Husserl dealt with their parents. And those stories, when you read with the children, it's their grooming and nurturing to begin to realize. Because the way the Sahaba dealt with their parents was that they always wanted to please them. Why? Because Prophet Muhammad was daily telling them in the masjid, you have to please your parents, you have to please your parents, you have to get your parents to love you, your parents are your children. So that inner, that dose in the masjid that they were getting, the Sahaba, when they would come home, even if the mother is not Muslim, like in Mecca the case was, even if the father is not Muslim, they would not say anything. That famous incident, I forget about that Sahabi, the mother was hitting on the hand, that his hand was bleeding. And he came to Rasulullah, this is what my mother did. And he said, don't say anything. Your mom has a right to love you. And he would argue that, Ya Rasulullah, but I am hurt. He said, the value of your mom is humongous in front of Allah. And this will one day bring her over to Islam. So that's why the whole aspect is of pleasing your parents. If the children know this, that I have to please my mom and dad 24 7, seven days a week, you know, 365 days a year, their whole mentality changes. Am I right? Because you were the first one not that. <laughs> you see that at all? The whole mindset changes. So, how does that change? Through stories. Look at this story, look how this Sahabi dealt with this, look how this Sahabi, look how this female companion, how she dealt with her mom, her dad. So when you read stories, they begin to develop this aspiration. I want to be like that. You know, they, they read comic stories, Marvel and this and that, and they want to be like that. So they want to be like the comics, you know, this, and make, make their costume and all that. Instead of giving those stories to kids at young age, we need to give them our Sahaba stories our Islamic history rich stories. The best thing that I see is Sirah also. The Sirah before he became a Nabi Prophet. That part of the story. Talk about Prophet Muhammad as a child, as a boy, as a young teenager, as a person in Mecca, going around like shepherds, uh, you know, shepherds men and all that. Those part of the face of the life of Muhammad showed that how he was a noble boy, not having a father, not having a mother, you know, he had no parenting. He, he had second degree parenting. His grandfather first. Then, you know, mother left at a very young age. So grandfather was there. Then he left. Then uncle. And uncle already is busy. Uncle has work to do. He has his own large family. Plus take care of his nephew. So he really never had that father, motherly love, compassion to deal with. Yet he became the best parent of the universe. When he became a Nabi, Allah taught him how to do parenting. So the biggest parenting philosophy we have is from the Qur'an and Sunnah. And that's why the whole modality of the Qur'an and Sunnah is resting on one word, please. Children need to know this. Even we as adult children, we have a job to do with our elderly parents. They're 70, 60, 80 years old. We have to please them. 
we can't reject our parents because what we do to our parents, they're watching. They're watching. And they're very quick to pick up. Oh, Abba, you told Nada like this on the phone, I heard you. Oh, I was just upset. So, you okay upset with your dad, your dad, and my dad, are you okay, you upset? And I can't be upset with you. So we, and then you're speechless. Because here's another thing that many parents don't want to do. I know he's sitting here, so what else is saying? Because I, 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 I say this all the time. The worst parent is the one who doesn't want to admit their mistake in front of their child. I learned this the hard way. I was a father, when I first became father, I was only 48. I learned the hard way. I never wanted to accept it. I felt like maybe not 38. If I accept my mistake, you know, in front of my son and daughter, I have no respect left, but I learned it the hard way. Then I, what the hard way I learned, that, you know, I changed my mind. I said, now, when I started admitting my mistakes, I saw they started pleasing. And I asked them, I asked my son and daughter, like, your attitude has changed. Oh yeah, not because now you accept your mistake. Before we used to tell you, no, then you were wrong. I said, no, I'm never wrong, you're wrong. So I learned the hard way that yes, you, we can be wrong. We are human beings for God's sake, come on. But we're not angels, we can make mistakes. And the biggest thing we need to teach kids is that look, mom, dad can make mistakes, it's okay. You can also make mistakes, it's okay. We are humans. But what is wrong is that you taunt or tease or disrespect mom and dad when they make mistakes. You know, teasing the mom at home or at work or someplace, or teasing the dad, oh look, you know, that is disrespect. Respect says that even if your mom and dad are wrong, you respectfully tell them, no, that is wrong, that's not right. And that's the respect uh, level that should be there. Because once that respect factor is always there, it'll, there'll always be a healthy relationship and they'll always love you and have compassion and we want to be with you. See, the biggest complaint parents have these days, they tell me, my parents don't want to spend time with me. Well, you know what? No, 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 they don't hate me. No, 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 they love me. I said, how do you know that? Oh, they tell me, I love you, dad. I love you, mom. Boom, they're out of the house. I said, that's <laughs> American style. It was just meaning, meaningless words, empty words. Love you, mom. Love you, dad. Where are you going? Oh, don't worry about it. I got to go to Jennifer. Jennifer, who's Jennifer? I'll talk to you later, dad. God, this is love. It's not love. It's just superficial love. Love means that they want to be with you, spend time with you. I think it was, uh, I think it was in the Muslim when we did the Friday night program. I mentioned there's a family that their kids didn't apply. They got a, a accepted in Ivy League schools, but they didn't go because they didn't want to leave their mom and dad in New Jersey alone. They settled for lesser universities locally so they can stay here throughout the college. Because they said, ultimately, I don't know where I'm going to get a job. So if I get a job out of state, I'm going to leave my mom and dad anyway. But at least for the college years, let me be close by. Because this time will never come back. And this is very important for children to learn. Even us as children, time never comes back. Whatever time you have with your mom and dad, grab it. Cherish it. It doesn't come back. When you want to be with your mom and dad, circumstances will be such you can't be. You have a job across the country all the way to California. You can't help it. You, know, that's, you can't get into job locally, so now you have to go there. So now you can't be there. There will always be a time when you will not be able to be with your mom and dad. So cherish the moment, cherish the time you have together and grab the best opportunity. And for that, you have to stop the children from this. Because when they do this, they want to do this. These two words are connected, they're twins. If there's hate, there's distance. If there's distance, there's bound to be hate. Every parent that tells me that my children distance from me, distance from me, I say, go find out, sit down with them, talk to them, inquire them. There must be some factor. There must be hate. No, no, they tell me they love me. No, I said, sit them down. One dad came to me and said, you know, Brother Jerry, you're right. I finally got to speak to my son, and I found out he had a lot of anger, resentment against me. I said, I told him. You told me he distanced from you, but I told him. But he never showed his anger. I said, yeah, because you never asked him. I told you, as an imam, you went there, you did the first exercise, homework, you found out. And his mindset, his paradigm shifted. When he was like, whoa, I never knew. His, his, his son was like maybe a teenage, 16, 17. So 16 years of work, I have to now undo it. But the good side of the story is that, you know, I still speak to him now. He said, now my son and father relationship. Oh, it's like this. We are awesome. We are, we are best friends. I said, thank you. That's how it's supposed to be. 
a son's best friend should be their dad. A mom's best friend, I mean, a daughter's best friend should be the mom. Because that distance, <coughs> that distance is telling me a red flag. It's like an alarm bell. You know, like somebody breaks into your house and the brake alarm is like, woo, 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 woo. Something wrong. Something wrong in my parenting. Why is my son and daughter trying to distance themselves from me? I gotta sit down and talk to them. And initially, when you talk to them, they are very, very introvert. They won't want to reveal it. No, everything makes up TV. Everything is no, I know this. I'm too tell deep. So I touch a lot. Let's go. Let's go for a walk. If you don't open up, if your son and daughter don't open up, and you sit down and talk to them at home, in the living room, bedroom, or somewhere, say, come, let's go talk. Many, uh, many of these parenting gurus, they said that activity-based engagement are very fruitful. Do an activity with your son and daughter, and then they open up. So I tried it with my son and daughter. Oh. I was surprised by my daughter. She would never want to talk to me that much openly. But I started doing this act. I said, so what, let's go do this. Okay, we go there. And in the car, she starts saying, is this my daughter? <laughs> oh, I got my daddy back. That's me and my dad. Oh, I've been missing doing something. So I'm learning on the go. And whatever I'm learning is what I'm teaching. Because if, if you can learn from my mistakes, that's better because I can save another household from you know, uh, trouble. So this is the basic main parenting philosophy. And one next Sunday, inshallah, don't want to give you a preview. Next Sunday, we'll be talking about this one, that uh, uh, how we can uh, in, uh, improvise our parental power. Remember the key terminology, parental power. That parental power has to have certain units. It starts off with zero units in the top of the day the child is born. Then it grows, you know, 10 units, 50 units, 150, 2,000 units. The peak of that is when the child becomes a teenager. And then when the child starts going to college and then, you know, jobs and marriage, that parental power begins to recite, re recede again. Because you reach a peak and then it has to go down because circumstances of life change, the dynamics of life change, they start having their own family, they start having their thing. So your, your parenting best shot is from, you know, uh, I would say age zero to 25. You have 25 years with your kids, depending how old you are. So your eldest, you may have the most time with them, your youngest, you may have the least time with them. So that time is where you have to uh, uh, literally carve out their personality, give them the things, and like I said, the biggest no-no, the biggest no in parenting is do not do as your parents did to you. This is like the mission slogan statement of any parenting class. Do not do as your parent did to you. Because it's inherent in us. Automatically we start thinking, I have to do like my mom did to me. My mom never gave me roti until I prayed namaz. Well, you were different. You, you did do the namaz and you got the roti. Today's kid, they'll say, forget it. I'll just go buy a McDonald's big thing, a big fish sandwich, something, you know? Fish burger. Keep your hurting, mom. I don't need it no more. Because I can take This is real. This real deal happened. I mean, you may be laughing at that. I was trying to do When it happened to a family, you know, one sister, she called me and said, This is what happened to me at my home today. How should I deal with this son? I said, like, You should have never told him that I'm not going to give you a roti. That was your days back home. This is America. I saw Pakistan, India, Bangladesh. These kids can go buy something else. And she was telling me, he, got, he went outside on his own on his bike, on his cycle, and he went to McDonald's, he bought the sandwich, and he's nibbling and eating. Oh, man, I think he's eating. I think of BB, sister, please change your parenting style. It's not going to work here. We have to adjust to the dynamic. Our parents didn't know how to deal with transgender issues. We have to deal with this. Your kids are going to come home now because thanks to Governor Murphy, he signed his contract, I mean, it's the law. So now every school, even this school, this liberal school, you must be seeing some books here where there are two mommies, two daddies. And worse than that is, the child sitting next to your daughter or son in the school, they may be the child of a two female or two male parent. And it's fine. They say, oh, my parents are gay. Why are you frowning here? Hey, teacher, she's frowning on my parents. And now it's part of the law. You cannot discriminate against gay or lesbian parents. If, if you, and this is very important, I'm, I'm going to be doing a session on this very soon in the Muslim on Friday night, how to handle kids when they tell you <coughs> in school they have friends whose parents are gay or lesbian. 
Because what you say as a mother or father at home is going to have consequences in the school. Because this lady or man that's sitting here, they are very fast to report. They'll report that these are racist or discriminatory children. Their parents are Muslims and they're discriminating. So what happens it is a real thing that happened in Bhutan to a family. Child services came and knocked at the door. Everything okay? What's going on? No, we have a report from your school. Uh, what, what happened? You, you are um, brainwashing your children. Some teacher reported to the child services that this child is very racist towards uh, homosexual children. And so the child services came to find out what you guys do, how do you, they want, before they wanted to take away the child in foster care, they wanted to do investigations. They said it's a state county investigation. And if the report is good, your child gets to stay with you. And if we give a wrong, if we give a report that there's very bad things going on here as a parent, you're, you are at the risk of losing your son and daughter. Many parents don't realize this in the masjid. I give a look on this topic, so this is a serious issue. It's a very sensitive issue. You can risk losing your son and daughter from your house because ISIS, Department of Youth and Family Services, will come and grab your child away. That you're not a good parent. Why? Because the school has changed. The school has laws. The school has now classroom subject being talked about it. And if your child reacts in a very negative way, they're going to affiliate that or put that to you. You are training. You're not. See, so this, this law is not just a law for school. This law is going to change the dynamics of society. Now, parents will be in trouble. Not just us Muslim parents, even the many diehard Christian parents are talking about this. This is a ridiculous thing, you know, because now we can get in trouble just for, you know, not accepting this thing. So, first thing you need to teach your kids respect. Better, better. If you see someone like this, they are different, it's okay. Respect them. Don't taunt them, don't tease them, don't criticize them, don't talk bad about them, don't make fun of them, don't do anything wrong with them. Because even our dean says, don't disrespect anyone. Mm -hmm. that's, that's something not against a religion, right? Respect is there. So fine, they want to act this way, whatever they want to act, but don't show disrespect because that can be the beginning. If a teacher senses that in class, that's dangerous, very dangerous. So some other day we'll talk about that. But for now, inshallah, next Sunday, we'll talk about the rest of this. And uh, just to give you a preview of how to build parental power and how to use that as a launching pad Inshallah, and then we'll cover the first parenting skill, skill number one from the Quran. Inshallah, it's time for Lord now, so we'll take a break. If you have any questions, we have five minutes before we go to the gym for Lord. But I have one request.